Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Trinity on this Memorial Day weekend, where we can remember those who have given the last full measure of devotion, according to the word of Christ, greater love hath no man than he lay down his life for his friends. May they rest in peace. It's good to be back with you here at Trinity after a couple weeks on the road away while our family traveled to Iowa, the exciting destination of Iowa, for my dissertation defense and graduation, which was successful. Thank you for your prayers. I shared in a Bible study this week that every person in this congregation, whether you knew it or not, participated in my project and dissertation on, on communion, on the Holy Communion. So I'm so grateful to you all for your support, and we'll find a time this summer to maybe present some of those results and findings, which I think you'll find interesting. When we left on our trip, it was winter, we had the heat on, and now that we're back, it is August already, so I hope you enjoyed your spring and summer in between. I want to start today with the story about the Lutheran guy, Jimmy. Jimmy was very faithful, he was always at church every week, and one week as he was kneeling down in his prayers, he asked, Lord, please let me win the lottery. The next week, he said again in his prayers, Please, Lord, I really need to win the lottery. And after the next week, with the same prayers, Lord, please let me win the lottery, he's walking out of church when he hears a voice from above. Jimmy. Yes, Lord, he cries. Jimmy, buy a lottery ticket. Now, if only we're so easy. If only God spoke and worked like that, but there's something in us that insists that you got to do your part. you got to be worthy. you got to buy your ticket if you want God's help in your life. But today in our gospel, we hear the story of God's generosity to the Roman centurion. Somebody who wasn't worthy. Somebody for who all, all of his power came to the Lord helpless and with empty hands. Empty except for faith except for trust in the loving power of the living God. Luke tells us today that there was a Roman centurion, an army officer who was in charge of a hundred men. Today we'd say a captain or a major, somebody who was in charge, somebody who knew how to get things done, someone who knew how to give orders and how to follow them. He patriotically served his country, but his country was Rome. And so he was a foreign, occupying soldier in Israel. For us, imagine a Russian soldier who's come to take charge of your town. But this centurion, this captain, had a slave whom he loved. And the slave was sick and close to death. And whatever he served, whatever he thought he owned in his life, whatever he was a part of, that we disagree with. He was also a human being who loved this other human being. And being an army officer, and as the son of one, I know this, the centurion knew the what to do if you need help with something. Hmm? Whom to ask if you really get in trouble. You go up the chain of command. In this case, the chain of command is to go ask Jesus. I mean, it's kind of incredible here, huh? Here we've got this big-time army officer who wouldn't know a Bible if it hit him in his head, but he can see no other solution to his situation except to go ask Jesus. Well, battle plan B, go ask the Lord. You and I might know, might not know a lot of big-time military people, but let's be honest, we do know a lot of people who are like this centurion. People that we love, people in our lives who are not churchgoers, people who don't know all the Sunday school answers, people who do not consider themselves religious or prayerful, people who all have all kinds of opinions and all kinds of doubts, but when trouble comes to them, when need arises, they are happy, they are delighted, they are moved if someone prays for them, if you pray for them because they know even if they've never seen the inside of a church, 
they know that they need Jesus. So the centurion sends some Jewish elders to go and speak to Jesus, to ask him on his slave's behalf. And so Jesus plans to do a house call. I'll go and take care of this. He's on his way to come and heal. But while Jesus is still far off, the centurion sends messengers saying, No, Lord. No, 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 no. Don't trouble yourself. I didn't mean to have you come all this way. I'm not worthy to have you come here. I didn't want to bother you by coming and asking for myself. Just speak the word. Just say the word. And my soul, my servant, shall be Maybe you can relate to this and hear it not feeling the word this time. We don't want to offer. We don't want to ask. We don't want to follow the Lord because we don't feel worthy. I find people struggle the most to pray for themselves. And maybe we're right. Think of all the commandments we break. Our thoughts, words, and deeds this week, this morning, of which we are ashamed. The things we've done and left undone. Our timidness and laziness in faith and worship. Christians all over the world suffering to gather on Sunday. And because it's a holiday, well, let's take it on. Our hardness of heart towards those we say we love, towards our neighbors far and near. We feel our unworthiness deep down. But even though you're just like us, certainly unworthy, the centurion also knows the power of Christ, his love for broken sinners like me and you. Look, Lord, I'm just a soldier, he says. I'm a man under authority. I say do this, and the private does it. My general says do this, and I do it. Just the same as you. One powerful person recognizes another. Birds of a feather. And the centurion sees this morning that Jesus is under God's authority. He has God's own power to forgive sinners to bind up the broken heart, to comfort the grieving, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Faith is spilling this morning from the lips of this enemy military officer. Faith in the last place you thought you'd find it. And what does Jesus say as he looks at the crowd of Israelites? I tell you, not even in Israel, in the land of God, have I ever found such faith as this? I was once at one of the local Indian buffets up the road, and I was talking to the Indian waiter, admiring all the interesting artwork on the restaurant wall and the statues they have of their various gods and goddesses. And he started asking me about our church and about what we believed in. And then he said he was interested in coming to our church. I thought I was having this big evangelism breakthrough, a missional moment, when the waiter said, oh yeah, I believe in Christ, I'm baptized, I'm actually a deacon in my church, and after my 12 hours of waitering today, I'm going to bring communion to our homebound members. We just put these statues up so that people think the food is authentic here. So there you go. You never know where you're going to find powerful faith. Sometimes in the last place you'd expect. Sometimes in a way that humbles and challenges we who are on the inside, church people, and are supposed to have it. And that's what Jesus finds today. God's goodness is so good. God's generosity is so generous. He is always at work for our friends and loved ones and neighbors, including and especially those who don't yet believe. And yet he is always looking to give and to grow faith in the places we would least expect. And the lips of the centurion on the lips of an Indian buffet away by the power of his word and spirit. So without ever seeing Jesus, without ever meeting him in person, 
without Jesus entering the home, without a touch, but only by word, by teleconference, the centurion returns home to find his slave healed in good health. Think about that. This is the good news at work for that slave, but also for you and me. The gospel of Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us to set us free, free from sin, free from death, free from our feelings of unworthiness, free to ask God on behalf of the people in our lives, including those who don't yet believe, free to live for him and with him forever. Because while Jesus brought healing and life for this centurion, another centurion would inflict suffering and death upon our Lord. We know it was another centurion who served as the supervisor for Christ's execution, who stood by and watched as he was nailed to the cross there to be wounded for our transgressions, there to take our suffering and unworthiness and shame and death into his wounds and take it away forever. And as Jesus stretched out his arms there in love for him, it was another centurion, another officer who spoke the first words of faith in the cross, faith from the last place you'd expect it, from the executioner's own mouth, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Those of you who have ever been to a Catholic Mass know that the last words they say there before taking communion come from our Gospel today. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. The Lord who loves you, who gave himself for you, comes to you now in the bread and wine, in his body and blood, to say the word, to forgive you, to renew faith in you, to heal you, and restore you back to the beloved child of God. He died to make you be. We are not worthy, but he loves us too. And he comes to us now to send you out in faith this week, out in hope this week, out in love this week, out to pray for those around you this week. Lord, we are not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and our souls shall be healed. And the peace of God passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.